here's the ultimate guide to customizing your iPhone with iOS 16. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and iOS 16 is on the horizon. So as you are gearing up to download the update to your phone when it is finally available, I'm gonna walk you through all of the ways that you can customize your iPhone with this major new update. From the lock screen, to the home screen, to new focus mode filters, there's a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and dive in to this ultimate guide to customizing your iPhone with iOS 16. So here is my iPhone running iOS 16. Everything will start here, right on the lock screen. First, I need to unlock my phone, and I'm gonna tap and hold for just a moment. This is you, how you get into the new lock screen customization tools. If you swipe all the way to the right, there's an add new panel. If I tap on the plus button, I can add a new wallpaper to my iPhone. You can choose from any of these featured ones here at the top. The phone will also suggest photos, maybe this one here of Caleb, some in New York, my wife, puppies, sunsets, all the stuff that just pulls from your photos. You can choose a photo shuffle, which is a dynamic set of photos that'll change throughout the day. You can go down to weather and astronomy. There's multiple views in all of these. They're very cool. There are emoji based ones where you can choose all the different emoji, the patterns, the colors, all of that with any of those emoji ones. There are various collections here, a lot of uh, swirl ones, there are some pride ones, some vintage rainbow apple ones. Of course, we have our clownfish there that has a new 3D effect going to it. This is the bubble one Apple often has. And at the bottom, there are just very uh, several color gradients for you to choose from. You can go ahead and choose any of these wallpapers to begin. If I chose Caleb here, you can see it has this neat depth effect where it puts his face right over the time which I think is just a really neat way of doing that. They do similar effects on the iPhone or on the Apple Watch, so I'm glad they're bringing it to the iPhone as well. You can turn off that depth effect here in the lower right hand corner, tapping that, puts his face behind the clock there. And if you have depth effect turned on, but you go to add a widget, it'll go ahead and turn off that depth effect automatically for you. Here's a lock screen that I had already started working on. You can see I've chosen the fish wallpaper, the clownfish and the coral. It looks super nice and I love again, the depth effects with the coral going over top of the time there. Now speaking of the time, if I tap on that time, I can choose multiple fonts and colors. I can go through the list and choose any font that I would like for the time. And then there's all these colors down below I can choose from, there's varying um, saturations of all these colors, or you can go to the color wheel located on that far right and choose from this as well. There's spectrum sliders and a grid for you to choose from. Once you're happy with the time, you can tap on that X there. Now we can add widgets if we like. Before iOS 16 is released, they're all pretty much Apple stock widgets because third-party apps don't support them yet. But once iOS 16 is fully released, Third-party apps will show up in here as well, such as Home Widget and many, many more. You can see some of the suggested ones here at the top, or if you go into any of these, you can choose them there as well. A couple ones that I like, Calendar is very helpful. You can see your upcoming appointments. I love the Home ones. You can see your home status, including uh, different climate sensors throughout the home, as well as doors or windows that are unlocked or opened. All very helpful. And you can just tap on them to launch the Home app and lock that door if it was unlocked. So there's some neat smart home integrations as well. There are others such as weather, really nice to be able to see the temperature or rain conditions right there on your lock screen. There's gonna be a ton of widgets coming here with iOS 16 and these third-party applications. It's gonna be fantastic. Choose any that you like, tap them, they automatically go up there. When you have them added, you can drag them to rearrange them. So you can put them into different spots based on the widgets that you have. I do need to add one more in here. There we go. Now you can see I can rearrange these. Just depends on your configuration that you have laid out. Sometimes it doesn't seem to want to move the uh, news to the right hand side, but this is still a beta after all. The last thing that I want to show here on the lock screens is going to be tying them to a focus mode. So here you can see on this view of all of my lock screens, I can tap on focus right here at the bottom. When I tap on focus, this list is brought up of all the different focus modes that I have. What happens is when you turn to that lock screen, this focus mode will be enabled. So I could just turn on do not disturb. I could put it into sleep mode, movie time, your driving one, personal work, or whatever other ones that you have set up. 
it's really useful. So for example, if I go back to my screens, I can move all the way here to the left, and I have a dark one, this nice astronomy face. You can see I've tied it to sleep mode. Now whenever I switch to this lock screen, it'll automatically put my phone into sleep mode. So each night I can move that lock screen, put it into sleep mode automatically. From there, let's move to the home screen. Apple has made a ton of adjustments to the home screen over the last few years. There's really neat stuff like the ability to hide full home screen views and use something like the app library located here at the end. It's really useful. As a mini refresher, if we go ahead and hold on our lock screen or our home screen to enter jiggle mode and move your app icons around, if you tap on that pagination at the bottom, here are all my home screen views. And you can see you can hide them or show them just with those little check marks. I'm gonna go ahead and hide those. When I'm hit done, it will hide them from view. All apps will be in the app library and I can just have the actual home screen pages that I need and I use on a regular basis. When in jiggle mode, if I tap on that minus button on an app, I can either delete the app or remove it from home screen. This will remove it from the home screen, but keep it inside of the app library and on your phone. Just another easy way to clean up your home screen, but still keep an app around. Go ahead and tap on cancel there. When I'm done, I can hit done in the corner or just swipe up from the bottom. While we're looking at it, we can also talk about adding widgets. Tap on that plus button in the corner and there's a whole array of widgets that you can add to your phone. Several that are stock Apple ones as well as third party ones like my Dexcom G6 glucose levels. I can see my home widget, just press record and many, many more. Let's jump into settings. Then let's go to notifications. With iOS 16, Apple has changed how notifications are displayed. If I swipe down from the top to go back to my lock screen, you can see I'm in do not disturb mode. But as I start to pull up from the bottom, you can see that's where the notifications now live, right there at the bottom. It's pretty handy because it doesn't take over your whole lock screen and block those widgets there at the top. You can change how they display, showing just a count, the stack, or a full list. I also want to quickly mention schedule summaries. These are super useful and you can have one, two, or several throughout the day at pre-scheduled times. And then they can put all your information into those summaries. Here you can see all the different apps that send me notifications and I can choose which ones show up in the summary versus which ones actually show throughout the day when the notifications come in. It's a really great way to help clean up the notification onslaught you may be trapped in. Then there are focus modes. I talked about focus modes when we were looking at the lock screen and here's more information on them. You can see the modes that I have and I can create new ones by tapping the plus button in the top right hand corner. There's completely custom ones. I can do ones around fitness, gaming, mindfulness, or reading. If I choose something like fitness, Apple already pre-chooses some things for you by allowing certain apps and blocking other ones. For example, with fitness, this can automatically turn on whenever I start a workout. If I go back, choose maybe the gaming one, gaming focus, you can see here, it can change things, your watch screens, and whenever I connect a wireless controller, the gaming focus turns on. Super duper useful. If we go back and look at some of my other ones, how about movie time? There are some people I still want to be able to reach me, but otherwise I don't want things to do too much. And I can have this automatically turn on when I get to the movie theater. So when I get to a movie theater, this will automatically turn on, set my appearance to dark, and I can add any other filters that I choose, such as limiting to certain applications while I'm in that movie theater. These can also be triggered based on time of day, location, or when you open a certain application. There's still so much more to uncover with iOS 16, so stay tuned, because I got a lot more to show you. So that pretty much covers it. There are still other changes you can make, right? There are still small things you can tweak and in-app tweaks, and there's a lot you can do with iOS, but this should give you a good starting point for your lock screen, your home screen, notifications, filter modes, focus modes, all of that. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all down below in the comments or over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Other than that, let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next video.